give this man his due. Back then, in the height of that bubble, in the height of that party, he did. Ron Paul knew and said then that something was wrong with our financial system a long time ago. The 10-term Republican congressman who ran for president joins me right now on the phone from Texas. Congressman, I mean, I caught some of this Greenspan thing, and it was a love fest. Even now. Even now. Yeah. I think he's trying to save his place in history, but I don't think he's going to achieve it unless he confesses and goes back to his roots and goes back to writing articles for Ayn Rand or something like that. But there's no way that he's going to escape the blame for this. And uh, I guess I am shocked also that he pretends he is shocked, too. But this this was uh, in motion for a long time. We, we've we had excessive credit, interest rates down to 1%. That distorts market. We've had so much moral hazard thrown out there. We've had the FDIC. We've had the CRA, Community Reinvestment Act. And then we had these mandates from the Congress to buy up all these uh, subprime mortgages through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. And then they wondered uh, why we were looking for trouble. I mean, the uh, the evidence was very clear as far as I was concerned. What I wonder about, Congressman, is uh, how we address this. Now, uh, Mr. Greenspan was warning that what we have to do now is get better regulation in place or there could be hell to pay. I mean, it's kind of stating the obvious after the, the animals have left the barn. But what do you make of that and, and whether you can re-regulate your way out of this mess? No, you can't do it. You can't do all those things that I just listed and think that regulation will solve the problem because you have to get back to the marketplace. He complained about the computer, computer models not working so well because they failed because they didn't have enough time to put into the computer, so they put the wrong information in. But the whole point is the computer models never work. What you have to measure is human actions of individuals, and they're different every time. They, you know, all this expertise we've had, uh, they're trying to bail out the housing industry, but instead of the mortgage rates going down, they've gone up. There are more defaults, not less defaults, because people are shifting funds and they're waiting. Now they're waiting. There's an incentive to wait for the government to come in and give them a new mortgage. So everything they've done have uh, continuously for so many years, and they haven't changed. But the idea, what really I resent about it, is that he, he knows and understood at one time what capitalism was all about. He went and distorted it. Now he says, well, this is the death of capitalism. What we need now are really, really good regulations on derivatives. We need to remove the system that creates the derivatives. So uh, right now I don't see any easy answers for what we're well, doing. Well, you're, you're right. I, I don't see the easy answers either, Congressman. And, and, and what, what bothered me most about a lot of Greenspan's testimony today is, you know, he's a very smart man. He did a great deal of good. I'm just saying that when, when, when there's a, sort of a perspective from time, you could say, you know, in retrospect, I, I, I knew I was focusing on keeping an economic boom going. I guess I shouldn't have, have been keeping my foot on the pedal so much. I, I should have just really looked at the bigger picture. None of that. Not, not one mea culpa, not one, you know, regret. And, and, and I, I tell you, that's what disturbed me most. Uh, see, I don't, I don't quite see it that way uh, because I think it's the fact that we allow – the Federal Reserve Board chairman to have his foot on the pedal is the problem. They always go to excesses. So whether it was Greenspan or Bernanke or Volcker or anybody else, you know, they don't have the wisdom to know exactly what weight you put on the pedal because it's a flawed system. Well, you're, 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 but you're doing it in the, right, but you're doing it in the middle of a fire. In the case of, of, of uh, Paul Volcker, you were rapidly raising interest rates to contain, uh, you know, inflation, but. Is it just the role of the Fed chairman to move in the moment and not think of, you know, years from the moment? Oh, yeah. I mean, in, in a way, they're intellectually arrogant because they believe that they know what the market, only the market knows. Nobody knows what the proper rate of interest is. It's always too high or too low when the Fed adjusts it. You, and you have to have savings. This is the whole thing that bothers me is they think they can correct this without emphasizing the fact that we have to spend less, live within our means, work harder, and start saving, and yeah. quit printing money and thinking that $5 trillion of additional credit is going to solve the problem that we had too much credit in the first place. It, right. it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. But, Congressman, you never watched Hogan's Heroes when you were younger, right? Uh, I have to confess. I didn't watch much TV, but I sort of liked that program. <laughs> yeah, well, he was Sergeant Schultz today. Yeah. I know nothing. All yeah. right. Uh, I tell you, Congressman, always good having you on. Thank, Thank you. you.